chicos y chicas, I am Ricardo Laguna and welcome back to my channel. And I know right now the home inventory is very low, but if you guys find yourselves as home buyers right now, and you guys want to know what can you guys do to have better odds to buy in that home? Well, let me give you some tips that might give you better odds on buying that property on today's home market. for sharing your valuable time to watch this YouTube video and it will mean the world if you guys hit that like button because by you guys hitting that like button it's gonna help this video to get out there so then more people can learn from it and if you guys haven't subscribed please subscribe as I aim to have new episodes every Monday Wednesdays and Fridays and if you guys haven't connected with my socials this are my socials now that we got that out of the way I'm going to share some tips that has helped me in the past to purchase the properties that I own right now. So if you guys can imply some of these tips, which will cost you nothing, that will give you a better chance for you guys to purchase that home. And let me start with tip numero uno. This is a personal one that I have used in the past and it worked for me. Make that purchase a personal purchase. But you might say, Ricardo, what do you mean by that? Well, I in the past have sent a letter to the owner or tried meeting, which a couple times it worked out and I met with the owner. So if you can pitch that idea and they're open to it, please try meeting with them or definitely try sending them a letter to explain your whole story. Because I have heard in the past, some people got it at lower price because the owner and the buyer made a connection. As of now, that has never happened to me, but I know by making a purchase personal, I have connected with the sellers that they end up choosing me to be in the buyer. Tip number two, offer paying closing costs. Now, yes, yes, I know that means that there's gonna be more money coming out of your pocket, but remember, buying a home, most Americans, that's one of their biggest purchases that they will ever make. So buyers, by you guys offering to pay the closing costs, it's showing the seller that you are a pretty motivated buyer, which means that you guys most likely will outbeat a lot of other offers out there, which will mean that the seller is gonna walk away with more money in their pocket, meaning that most likely your offer is gonna sound a lot sweeter than the others. So now with that said, who would not entertain that idea? Tip number three, do your inspections ahead of time. If you guys get to do the inspection ahead of time, this will show you what things could be wrong with the property. And that will help you have a better idea how much money is gonna cost you to fix that property. Or how much stuff you can fix down the road and you are okay moving in with those issues. Giving you guys some comfort by making that offer. Tip number four, remove loan contingencies. By you guys doing that, it's gonna show that you're the most competitive buyer possibly out there giving you an edge with the other buyers. And what do I mean by being more competitive? Well, let's look at this perspective from the seller's view. If they have a cash buyer, well, this would mean that the cash buyer can just about remove anything to get the deal done. A buyer that has a loan will have to follow certain guidelines that are set from the bank or from whatever they are getting their loan from. So cash is kings and those buyers won't have to report to anybody if they want to get the deal done. Plus a cash buyer is not required to do an appraisal. By the way, cash buyers, I highly recommend you guys to still do an appraisal regardless. Because I mean, for once, most appraisals that I've done, they only cost me about four to $700. And I have learned tons of things from those appraisals because I didn't notice certain things when I first sold the property, but I learned that once I sold the appraisal. So appraisals, they are great investments if you ask me. Anyways, back to removing any loan contingencies. You can start removing as many contingencies as you want 
When you write your first offer, of course, you're gonna have to be comfortable with that. As well, make sure you have everything pre-approved with your lender, and that should increase your chances to win that purchase. This will help you to be more competitive, and hey, maybe not need to increase your price offer. Tip number five, I keep hearing about escalation clause. I truly don't like this one because this would mean that you'll be showing all of your cards. And what do I mean by that? Well, when you give an escalation clause, you are basically saying this is your highest and best offer and that allowing you to have many other angles to work with so you can try getting the best deal possible. But on the flip side, the way the market is right now, this could work to your advantage since properties are selling so fast and you guys are cutting right to the point with your best and final offer. So take it or leave it. Tip number six, conventional loan. Traditionally, conventional loans will require a more stable buyer. I don't know if that's the right word I'm looking for, but we just gotta go with that. Conventional loans means less requirements and better odds for the loan to go through without any hiccups. Tip number seven, buyer will only require to get something fixed if it exceeds something that is over a thousand dollars or whatever number you guys feel comfortable but definitely try making it the higher the better that will show that most likely you guys will not be nitpicking all sorts of things because let's get real here most houses have a couple issues here and there that might not need to get fixed or be addressed so that tip for sure will make you stand out Tip number eight, lease back. When you buy the property, you can allow the owner to live there an X amount of time, whatever you guys can work out, because they might be waiting for their new home to get finished up, to get built, and they don't want to move into a rental. So lease back could be a smart idea. So with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and it will mean the world if you guys hit that like button. If you guys haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel as I aim to have new episodes every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. If you find this video useful, please share it with your friends. And if you guys have any questions, this is my email. And if we haven't connected with my social media, this is my social media. Now, to put this video to rest, this are a couple other ideas just came to mind off-market deals, but to be transparent, I have never done an off-market deal because I have heard they are a lot more difficult because this would mean you guys will need to find a homeowner that's willing to sell their property. And hopefully the owner would want to sell at the right price. Another thing that you guys need to be confident is what realtor you guys are going to hire. Don't hire a realtor that's not going to give you 100%. For example, if they don't write solid offers for you guys, follow up with the other agents, and many other things that realtors should put their sweat and tears on. 